you've identified from a young age as an anarchist and during that time the popularity of anarchism has uh, fallen and risen. And I wonder if your core philosophy, your anarchism, has evolved or changed during the course of your life? Well, it's not what it was when I was 10 years old. But, uh, fundamentally not, but that's because it, uh, the core philosophy just seems to me like common sense. I don't see how anybody can not accept it. So, uh, you know, the core the core principles, as far as I understand it, that I mean, anarchism covers an extremely wide range, and all sorts of you can, you can't encapsulate it in formulas. But uh, it seems to me there is a, a sort of a thread that runs through it, and it is basically uh, skepticism about uh, any form of authority or domination or submission or whatever. And it, the Idea, basic idea is that uh, uh, domination and hierarchy are not self-justifying. Uh, they have to justify themselves. There's a burden of proof to bear. And if they can't justify themselves, they should be dismantled. And that covers everything from personal relations to international affairs. Uh, and then out of that come various varieties of anarchism, depending on what exactly you're looking for in the future, or what do you do what are the alternatives to authority and so on. Uh, but uh, almost everything decent in human life seems to me to fall under that. So no, that hasn't changed. Well, the part, the tendency of anarchism, which I guess um, you subscribe to, of anarcho-syndicalism, overlaps fairly closely with council communism around this notion of worker councils. And mm -hmm. for the, the public at large, the assumption is that an anarchist society would be one where people ran amok, uh, where there was chaos. What well, that's would... The, that's the propaganda. Uh, actually, anarchist views were mostly of highly organized societies. So what would that society look like, a society of worker councils? Worker councils, I think, should be one component of it. Uh, so it means uh, in any institution, say a university or a factory or whatever it is, uh, the participants uh, would uh, run it. They'd run it through councils in which people participate and make decisions. Actually, not, it's not unlike a faculty, which is about as close to this model as you get in, the, uh, in our world, where it's, you know, there are outside controls, but pretty much uh, the faculty makes decisions about what happens internally. Actually, one of the things about that makes university life appealing, uh, much more so than higher paid professions, is that you're running your own life to a large extent. I mean, there are duties, but they're technically they're supposed to be shared, you know, and shared by common agreement. And uh, you may decide to work 80 hours a week, but it's the 80 hours that you pick and it's the topics that you choose to work on and the, it comes out with kind of like an inner need rather than external compulsion. And I think that's the kind of model everything should turn towards. So worker councils would be one component of a freely organized society, but uh, they'd have to interact with others. So an institution, say a factory, whatever it is, uh, is in a community and the community should have a comparable uh, form of self-organization and self-management, and then they have to interact. And uh, it's complex interactions because many people are parts of a lot of them. Uh, and uh, uh, as a, uh, an anarchist society, the kind that I think is desirable would develop, it would have to deal with quite concrete problems about the nature of self-government, the nature of uh, administration. Uh, uh, do you want to distribute jobs so that they're fixed, or do you want circulation of, uh, uh, of uh, responsibilities and, and actions? Uh, and there's no simple answer to that. Like, uh, you know, you want people to be trained as surgeons, let's say. Uh, uh, on the other hand, you don't want all the dirty work done by a special category of people. So that has to be worked out, distribution of uh, job functions and uh, interactions between different forms of 
which should be voluntary association. And there are many other problems, like what happens if somebody doesn't want to be part of it, they take on the responsibilities of a community. I mean, those are problems that exist in any society, and they would exist in a different form in a more free society. Uh, and at this point, you have lots of different uh, ideas. So you know, there are people, basically anarchists, who think that uh, pay, payment, you know, what you earn from your work should be uh, proportional to effort. Uh, there are others who think that's not an appropriate model, that it should be independent of effort. Uh, I tend toward the latter, but most of my friends tend toward the former. So, uh, But these are real questions, and they're innumerable ones. Well, thinking about the road to a stateless society, an anarchist society, you have written that you believe that radicals should defend those gains which have been fought for by people um, that are uh, embodied in the state, such as social security, such as progressive taxation. Other anarchists might argue that this holds people within the kind of paternal, paternalistic grip of the state. Uh, why do you come down where you do on this? We have to ask what the alternatives are. I mean, uh, many anarchists just consider the state the fundamental form of oppression. I think that's a mistake. I mean, of the various kinds of opp oppressive institutions that exist, uh, the state is among the least of them. Uh, the state, at least, uh, you know, to the extent that the society is democratic, you know, various degrees and types, but to the extent that it's democratic, you have some influence on what happens in the state. Uh, you have no influence on what happens in a corporation. They're real tyrannies. And as long as uh, society is largely dominated by private tyrannies, which is the worst form of oppression. The, uh, people just need some form of self-defense, and the state provides some form of self-defense. So to say, well, let's dismantle Social Security means concretely, uh, let's uh, decide that that uh, disabled widow across town will starve to death. I don't, I don't agree with that. In recent years, there's been a fair amount of debate about what process of fundamental transformation of society might take, what would it look like? There are those who argue that um, radicals need to change the world without taking power. And another position is that a, a revolution of some kind would be necessary. What do you um, think uh, with regard to this? And do you see the role of pre-existing state formations, say nationalized industries, as playing some part in such a transformation? I don't think there's a general answer. It depends a lot on circumstances. So say right now, uh, I think it would make, uh, say with the bailout of the banks, uh, a short term, you know, uh, a dedicated anarchist might say, look, I'm not even going to talk about this. There shouldn't be any banks. Uh, that's like saying, I'm not going to talk about getting rid of nuclear weapons because everyone should live in peace. I mean, you know, life, these things are kind of like a chess game. There's no point coming in and saying, well, I, I just want to mate the king. No, you got to say, well, what, what do you do about that one over there? You know, you have to get places and stages. It doesn't, it's just a gift to the forces of oppression to say, well, I'm not going to talk about anything except the final state. Okay, then fine, we'll keep things as they are. Uh, so sometimes nationalization might be a positive step, say, uh, for the government to have, say, bought Citigroup, I think, would have made more sense for them to, them to bail it out at a far greater expense. Uh, once it's bought, then the question comes, okay, how's it run? Is it run by the community, by its participants? Is it sold off to some other corporation and so on? Uh, but I, I just don't see how there could be a general answer. You have to ask about the particular circumstances. Like I say, if you're playing chess, you have to ask about the pawn that happens to be in front of you.